My name is Jake Wobrock, and I am the CEO and co-founder of AnswerDash. This is Andy Coe. He's the CTO and also co-founder. We're professors from the Information School here at UW, and we founded AnswerDash. Thank you. We founded AnswerDash to, uh, to give users instant answers at the point of action where they need them when they're using websites and web applications. Some of you have may have seen the word Kazao associated with us. That definitely wasn't us with that crappy name no one can spell or say. I don't know where that came from. We've rebranded and we're launching our major product uh, launch here this spring under AnswerDash. Have any of you ever felt this way with your computers? Maybe you have a question you can't get an answer to. Maybe you're confused or frustrated about something and you just don't know what you might do next. Or maybe you're shopping on the mobile web and you're not sure how to get an answer to something and you get frustrated with that. Maybe you even went so far as to call customer support, which even when it's good, is bad. Uh, what do you guys think are the lost sales for e-commerce websites in the US due to unanswered questions for consumers? Three billion, what else? Three billion, going once. Actually, it's $8.2 billion a year. Because if you can't get answers, you quit. You abandon, you go elsewhere, you give up. If we had to, so we're professors, we like to give letter grades. What letter grade would you give to mobile self-service if you're, say, shopping on the mobile web on a smartphone and you want it, an F? I heard an F. A D minus. How about an F minus? <laughs> there isn't really anything here. It's, it's really an untapped space. When was the last time you actually thought the help link on a website would be helpful. I, yeah, I'm hearing crickets. So that's my answer too, never. If you fell for that, you maybe were optimistic, but it wasn't helpful. The reason is that help links lead to help islands, and help islands are things like knowledge bases, facts, and forums. They're places where you have to do the work. You have to dig for answers. You have to do you know, the searching effort and the reading effort. And help islands really take you away from your task. They take you off your purchase workflow, out of your critical path. We don't like help islands very much at AnswerDash. Now, some people think live chat solves all the problems, right? But live chat has its own drawbacks, too. It costs something for one thing. You need someone else on the other end. What do you guys think is the average time to resolve a live chat session? 20 minutes. That's, that's typical, but not quite the average. The average is nine minutes. That's still a long time. We call this long chat. And actually, 74% of live chat users could have their answer resolved in one sentence. But it takes that long just to even get to that point. How many, how many users want to self-serve and provide answers under their own power? 80%, that's a good guess. It's actually 75% of users want to answer their own questions. They want to be empowered. And the 25% that aren't represented here tend to be of a much older demographic who want assisted service. So at AnswerDash, we are providing a way for companies to give their customers instant answers right where they need them with self-service. We're doing this uh, as a spin-out from the University of Washington Information School. We're a VC-backed company. We raised our Series A last December, and we are growing quickly. Now we're going to actually... Um, no, we're not. We're going to talk about customers first. Then we're going to have a demo. We have um, a number of customers who are trying us out. They are, they are all up and going and working well. We're adding new customers every week. We're headed towards a major product launch here at the end of spring. And now we're going to have a demo. Uh, one of our beta customers is Moz. You've maybe heard of Moz. And they, we are their answer layer in their new SEO application. So Andy Ko, our CTO, is going to do a demo here of AnswerDash at Moz. All right, can everybody hear me okay on this mic? No? Is it on? There it goes. All right, so let's see if I can stare at this mic and also stare at this tiny little screen. So this is moz.com. Imagine you just signed up, um, and you're browsing around trying to understand all of these labels that you're seeing on the site. You're looking at traffic and attention and authority and all kinds of other things you don't understand. How do you figure out what all of these things are? How do you figure out what any of the things mean on the site? The typical way that you do this is you use a help island, right? You're staring at this question mark. Uh, maybe we open this up in another tab, and we're curious about this domain authority concept. So we go in and type domain authority. 
And what you get is the typical set of search results. You have no idea whether any of these are actually useful or valuable. You don't know where the answer is that you're looking for. And worst of all, it's taken you away from the task that you're trying to do. With Answer Dash, this is a lot easier. All you have to do is click on this Q&A tab that we impose on the side of the page. Um, you enter a Q&A mode where you can browse around and see anything on the page. Um, we want to know what domain authority is, so we're going to click on that. And we see a question right here, what is domain authority and how does it work? Um, there's the answer. We give a nice, short, Twitter-sized answer. Moz.com has given a link to the exact knowledge base article that defines what this is. And you've all done that within the scope of the page without having to leave or go anywhere else on the site. Uh, there's three big technical challenges that we tackle as part of this. One of them is making sure that we give relevant answers like these to every single object on a customer's site for all of the possible sites that we might serve on. Um, ch technical challenge number two is doing this at scale. So we serve the combined traffic of all of our customers' pages. So if we have 50 million page views a day, that's how many customers we're serving. We want to do that at scale. Um, Finally, the technical challenge number three is taking all of that usage data, all of that search data that we get of those millions and millions of users and searches, and helping customers in our customer tools make sense of what that data means and how it might shape or shape, change or shape the business that, um, that customers are doing. The best thing about all of this is that it all works um, on mobile. And so we support iOS and Android and an increasing number of um, other types of applications and platforms. And with object search on mobile, it's even better because you don't have to do any text searches. All you have to do is tap on the thing you have a question about, and you instantly see all of the questions that anybody else in the world has asked about that application and that concept. We're Answer Dash, and thank you. So if you're in the back and you're talking right now, shh. If you were talking two seconds ago, we welcome you to have your conversation, but you need to take it out because it's really, really hard to hear. Raise your hand if you're having a hard time hearing. Okay, everyone's having a hard time hearing. We want to hear the presenters. If you are networking, if you are talking, awesome, but please go outside. So raise your hand if you can hear me talking right now. Okay, if you do not have your hand raised right now, I know I'm being a hall monitor in the principal and I get accused of this, but we want to honor these presenters. They spend a lot of time working on this and there's people here who really want to get this information so we'd really love to have that possible for them. So if you have a conversation, please take your conversation outside this is a quiet place. The conversation place is outside. Thank you. So our next presenter is from Graph Lab. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Scrappy, and I'm alone. Without Red, I don't know what to do. We have three minutes of Q&A. <laughs> so, so please, anyone who has a question right now, please raise your hand. Uh, just want to understand, uh, so how do you find those topics? Like for the e-commerce, can you give us some example? And uh, how do you, I mean, there can be n number of questions, right? For each customer has a different number of questions. How do you, why do you decide that this, this, custom, this question is specific for that one? And is there like 90 percentile or how do you decide that? Yeah, so this is actually a really novel piece of the extraction algorithm that we do. One of the things that we try to solve is we take whatever is on the customer's site and try to find all of the topics that are relevant on that site that we might have questions that are relevant to. Um, and then all of the questions that come in that customers ask when they visit the site, we associate with those topics. And it's up to the customers then to make sure that the topics are appropriately assigned, and then we retrieve them um, based on that. It works on any page. It doesn't work on Flash. If you have a site from the 90s, sorry, we don't support you. Otherwise, it's a totally web standard. Oh, the setup process. Yeah, it's really simple. All you do is put a one-line JavaScript snippet in your page. Um, you decide who you want question notifications to go to. Maybe you style it a bit so that it matches um, your site and your site's colors and fonts. After that, you launch. And all of the questions that come in um, from your visitors, you answer. Um, and then you're good to go. 
over time, then we start gathering data and start offering you insights and analytics about what it is people are thinking when they come to your site um, right, at, right before they buy something, right before they cancel, right before they leave your site for good, um, and give you those insights that really no other kinds of analytics, analytics can provide. One of the things we've seen on e-commerce sites we've deployed on is that we've increased their sales by double-digit conversion rate uh, percentages. So they're actually selling more because people aren't abandoning because they're getting the answers they need. That's one of the main benefits. We also reduce their support costs because they service their own questions and uh, don't need to call customer support. Yeah, so pricing is a tiered SaaS subscription model, and we, we charge on either monthly or annual subscriptions. It's based on, so the tiers are based on features and also based on usage. So a bigger site with more usage will be higher price. Any, one last question. Uh, before last Christmas, it was about 20%. Now it's about 40%. So the question was, how many mobile users relative to desktop users? And we just saw a huge lift over the past, um, the past five months um, in terms of mobile usage. So that's definitely where things are going, and we're right there with it. It's an exciting time to be a, a one-tap answer service on mobile, because about 50% of e-commerce will be off mobile devices in one year. It's already about 35% for most places. And it's picking up even faster than some of the predictions forecasted. All right, thank you very much. It's finally quiet in the back for you, Carlos.